FDM versus SLA. Which one's dying? The answer will shock you. Welcome back to the show, guys. Today we're going to talk about exactly that. This technology ruined 3D printing. <laughs> I love that one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that would be a great title, though. Yeah, good times. So with the uh, advent of, you know, now we sell all the Formalabs equipment. So we've got their SLS machines with the nylons and the flexibles, uh, the Fuse 1, OnePlus, all that jazz, and their SLA resins on top of the FDM machine, like the 22 IDEX, obviously, and the Hilo. But now that we're in that ecosystem of SLA, there's all these different materials available, including flame retardant, you know, UL94 V0, flexibles and super mm -hmm. rigid and mm -hmm. the alumina and everything. Is FDM a, a dying technology? Well, yes. Interesting. Yes. And why do you think no, that? No, yes. Because I have a different opinion that I'll I share know you do. afterwards. Impeccable resolution. Now, very fast speeds. Uh, the, definitely, they're still brittle, but with the Formlabs materials, they're incredibly strong and have exceptional, I'm going to actually sell you on this, exceptional heat resistance up there or greater than peak in some cases. And the software is flushed out enough where it's literally a push-button event. And you come back and you have these incredibly accurate, incredibly strong, incredibly beautiful, end-use quality prints beat that balls in your court bro all right so fdm i think will is here to stay uh for a couple reasons the main reason being thermoplastics thermoplastics what's that uh it's not a thermo temperature set. plastic right so a thermoset Therm is a plastic that that cures and hardens with heat Photopolymer mm -hmm. resins are similar. It's heat, and you know, when the, the light hits it, it reacts and causes that heat, and it cures. Mm -hmm. It doesn't melt back down, and you can't reform it into something else. No. But thermoplastics are the plastics we all know and are used to, where if you heat it up, it'll melt, and it'll flow, and then it'll harden back into a solid as, uh, yeah, as it cools down. So you can do stuff like injection molding. Interesting fact. Plastic, you know this is not a, like a material, it's a, well, it is, but first plastic was used as a descriptor of something yeah. that, um, the actual definition I think is something that deforms, and when it's deforms, it stays that way. What? Yeah, Google what the definition of plastic is. In physics and material science, the ability of a solid to permanently deform when subjected to an external force, for example, bending a piece of metal, is a plastic deformation. Nailed it. Interesting. Yeah, isn't that fascinating? Uh, and I think yeah. plastics, the quote definition, the, the, the reason we call all of these nylon blah, blah, blah plastics is for that it, because it embodies that yeah. physical trait. And what they really are, the technical term is a, is a polymer. Yes. Right? So polymer is a substance made of large molecules mm -hmm. or macro macromolecules that are made up of repeating units called monomers. The mm -hmm. word polymer comes from the Greek words for many parts, and monomer means one part. And those also exist in resin. And as a matter of fact, resin formulations are absolutely, but my brain just turns off when mm -hmm. I see <laughs> someone actually yeah. try to reverse it. Because I was wondering, this is funny, I was like, man... Just like, I can make my own PLA. I was like, I wonder if I can make my own resin. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do not have a degree in uh, chemical engineering. Yeah. We're, that's another fascinating video uh, we can talk about. And I can link to the guy I'm talking about, but it's like, whoa, oh, this you is complicated. You material scientists out there? Yeah. Respect. If you're a material scientist watching this, and I think there actually might be some, yeah. which would you prefer to work with? Uh, 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 the re what are the benefits and nerd out down there? Yeah. Nerd out. I love that. So by the way, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying this content, we sell 3D printers, 3D scanners, and the software to run it FDM, SLS, SLA, you name it, we got it all. And that's what supports us and lets us create content like this for you. So if you enjoy this, please leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe. And if you really want to get into something for your business, give us a call, shoot us an email. We are absolutely here to help you. So I guess to, to continue on that, yeah, thermoplastics, right? So it can be melted and reformed. Okay, why does that mean FDM's here to stay? I think it's 
really just because there's so much of it that's ubiquitous in society. There's plastic parts everywhere. There's mm -hmm. stuff there. And we have so many ways to manufacture it, machine it, uh, to uh, injection mold it, to, you know, make it by hand, you know, whatnot. Uh, I think it's just, it's just so useful and used and out there. Maybe things will change in the next 20, 30 years. We do have, like, the environmental factors and whatnot where plastic is kind of like, okay, it's petroleum-based, et cetera, or it's uh, uh, cornstarch-based because PLA is not petroleum-based, right? It's polylactic acid. It's from cornstarch, et cetera. It's biodegradable. Th this is going to go straight into the eco Biodegradable. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You want to touch on that for a second? I don't want to touch it. <laughs> uh, not yet. We'll get there. So It's a lie. You know, you know, on a on a long enough time scale, yeah, I could see us not using plastic anymore. So FDM could die um, in the next ten to twenty years. Nah, no, it's here to stay for a long time. What but would no, huh? you can't replace huh? plastic unless it's all metal. Like what? Anyway, that's another interesting. Oh, how is how are we going to get rid of plastic? Yeah, no. Well, and that's just the thing because all the health concerns and whatnot. You know, all the health concerns of endocrine disruption and all this stuff. We're wearing plastic clothing most of the time, nylon and polyester, and it's coming out more and more that that stuff's not good for the body just to be in contact with your body. So I can see on, you know, over the next 20 years mm. um, finding other ways to do stuff. I don't know what it would be, but you usually don't before it happens, right? There's ways to manufacture stuff. We already do. We, there's friction welding and whatnot, which is super high vibration and two pieces of metal, and they red hot melt together. Super cool. Maybe we'll discover a new way to put molecules together just in general that, that eliminates the need for plastic. Uh, it'd have to be something like that for it for it to go. That's such an interesting question. What c could possibly replace plastic? Well, it's like, what, what could replace a uh, horse and buggy? Could you have guessed back, no. back no, then? No, right. no, 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 right. no way. So to think that if you know any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from, from magic. sorcery, magic, yep. magic that's the right quote, yeah. And that's why we ain't gonna find no aliens. Well, <laughs> SLA is kind of like magic, though, I swear it, it is. No, look, I'll concede this. We did, uh, I had a print fail, and they do oh. fail, and they do warp, mm -hmm. and they do have some post-processing. For me, it's the simplicity of, for the most part, if your machine's tuned in and like Formlabs machines, you don't have to tune anything. Tune it just anything. does it. Push button, receive part. I can right. just, before I go to bed, be like, oh boy, that's the entire build volume. Okay, click. And there's a very good likelihood that when I wake up that it all will print with no issues and that's it. It's just extremely hands-off, okay. except for the cleaning. But no, um... Ten years ago, I would have said absolutely not. But this is the way I think about it. Maybe I'll get in trouble for saying this. But if you think about actual printers, oh. two-dimensional printers, FDM is still is an inkjet. It's using belts to move a nozzle around, right? Works great. We have it nailed. But there's laser jets out there. Yeah. There's laser printing. Uh, we were going somewhere interesting. Good with this, though. Look. Large parts, I watched someone 3D print an entire hull of a boat that then was covered in fiberglass, but they to make the mold, for the most part, they pretty much just, what? I just thought it was funny. They, <laughs> they printed the whole boat, and then it was all coated in fiberglass. Well, but it sounded funny. that's FDM, and it was super amazing, and things, in terms of tech, what's, I want to go on to this tangent real quick. What most people don't realize with FDM and powder bed technology is that things that are absolutely impossible for subtractive manufacture. So this boat, because it was 3D printed, had multiple tons of different watertight compartments because it used infill. So that means if you get a huge hole on the bottom of your oh, boat, yeah. that's not gonna, that's just gonna oh, impact dude. that slight area. Jet turbine engine blades, right? They're made of these exotic materials. They're heavy. The lighter we can get it, the better. Well, you can print them hollow with an infill out of titanium and yeah. make them just as strong but, uh, well, almost as strong, and way less. Like, that's the type of stuff that's like, what? Yeah. Um, and that's an F, uh, well, that's powder bed. <laughs> well, no, or uh, EDM. Or yeah. Or oh, man, we should cover all the other technologies out there of large-scale 3D additive manufacturing, yeah. like the, the wire yep. welding one, and it's so cool. Yeah. 
If you guys want to see that, if you wanted to do a deep dive into the wild, uh, cutting edge, bleeding edge state of tech and 3D printing for metals, uh, let us know in the comments below. We can do that. And if you are interested in FDM, SLS, SLA, 3D printers, their materials thereof, or 3D scanners and the software, again, we sell all that here at visionminer.com. That's how we make our living and bring you this content. So I actually have a question for the audience. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to step on you, Rob, but do you want to, do you enjoy the more entertaining or do you want us to get deep into this like nitty gritty philosophical, like hypothetical methods of additive manufacturing in the future, acoustic levitation, so on. Uh, things you might not know about, hyper large scale 3D printing, 3D printing sky skyscrapers with concrete, how that could be done, or do you want it to be more what pertains to you? I think the answer is gonna be yes. Okay, well, <laughs> we uh, know more than we sound like we know. Do we, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, we sell 3D printers, 3D scanners, 3D software, materials thereof, all the above, and we're really here to help to, if, if you're confused, if you're lost, and you're like, I don't know which machine to buy, what's actually gonna be the best one for me, where I'm going, what my budget is, everything, we're here to help you with that. So give us a call, shoot us an email. 3D Evo, hit me up. Have a positive rest of your day. It's a pleasure as always, my friends. I'll see you next time on the next video. 3D, seriously, 3D Evo, hit me up, dude. I'm fiending. <laughs>